After years of waiting, a sequel comes along that hit for both kids and adults alike with brilliant commentary, sharp dialogue, and a really tight script. I'm of course talking about In and Out, starring Kevin Kline, the 1997 comedy drama. Oh, that, that actually makes a lot more sense. Like, why, why would they do that now? Uh, no, I guess I'm talking about the Pixar movie, Inside Out. It got a sequel, Inside Out 2. Thank you, Shiloh. That makes a lot more sense. Let's talk about it. Joy, anger, sadness, and my depression are back for Inside Out 2. This is going to be a spoiler-free review, so don't worry about any of the little details getting thrown at you. I'm just going to loosely cover the plot, what I think works, what I think doesn't, and whether or not it's worth your time going to the theaters with the little ones, or by yourself. Typically, going to movies brings out my favorite emotion. Joy. And you know what would make me really joyful? If you hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss a single one of my videos in the future. Because I post movie reviews, roasts, rants, even live streams every single week on the channel. Would love to have you stick around. What a joyous occasion it would be. When Bob Iger came back into the Disney fold and announced that all Disney movies were basically going to be prequels, remakes, sequels, whatever, I was very bummed out. I was very disheartened. And by proxy, it kind of meant that Pixar was going to be doing the same thing. And that's why we have Inside Out 2. I just kept thinking, like, out of all the movies in their portfolio to make a sequel out of, Inside Out felt so unnecessary. Sure, keep crapping out Toy Story films. That makes sense. There's a lot you can do with that. But Inside Out was such a smart self-contained film that I didn't want to see it get ruined. And as I get older, I feel like I may be losing a bit of touch with the younger audiences that this might cater to, especially with Disney on board. Some folks might not want to take their kids to a movie that features a girl who's questioning her sexuality, how she identifies, and starts every conversation with her pronoun preferences. This is not that movie. Instead, it focuses on the general issues that teenagers go through. Riley is going to a hockey camp with two of her best friends, and the whole movie is going to center around this and pretty much this alone on the human side of things. Her parents are barely in the mix. It's really about the friendships she has, how she's going to find her place with the new year around the corner, how she's going to win over the hearts and minds of her peers, and really some of the dumb mistakes teenage girls make along the way. As a teenage girl myself, I really dug the messaging here. No, I'm a dad, I took two kids to this, actually a 15 year old daughter and a 12 year old son. We all loved this movie. We're huge fans of the first one. I, again, I was very scared going in that they just wouldn't have the material, the creativity, and the direction needed to tell a great new story. I was dead wrong. Pixar has done it again. They were on kind of some bad footing for a while there with that crappy Buzz Lightyear movie and a couple of misfires at the box office. I enjoyed Elemental, but it didn't feel like the standard I've come to expect from a Pixar film. It just was kind of a safe, solid story. And I think, again, it works so well, just like the first one, because it's relatable and it's timeless. It's not focusing on trends of today. It's not focusing on humor of today. It's just a story that encompasses all walks of life, old and young. I briefly talked about Riley's story. I'm not going to give anything else away. I gave you the top level of what's going on. But internally, she's got struggles as well. Just like Inside Out 1, this one has an equal amount. I would say it's actually more focused on the emotions this time around than it is on Riley herself. It felt like it was 70% emotions, 30% real world stuff. And I liked that because we spend more time with not just joy and sadness in this one, we get the whole catalog of characters, which includes a host of new emotions, the main one being anxiety. Joy, once again, is the focal point of the emotions and how she's handling this newfound character that's come along, along with some of the others. And while this might feel a little bit familiar to the first, I thought Inside Out 2 brought more than enough new stuff to the table, to the point where I was actually constantly impressed with some of the creative puns, the play on words, all that stuff going on, such as sarcasm, 
being an actual chasm that opens up a giant canyon whenever Riley starts spouting off at the mouth. There's her imagination land, which yes, yeah, South Park did it first, but it's not the same thing here. The new ideas kept coming. They kept you on your toes, they kept you invested. And I do think this film moves faster than the first. It's more action packed, there's more jokes, there's less slow down times, but it still retains all that heart that the first one had. If it hasn't become clear yet, I freaking loved this movie just as much as the first and so did my kids. Obviously, from a production standpoint, the film even looks better than before. There's so much more detail on everything. I even like the simple font treatments, just introducing the film, kind of carrying over from the first, but even going a little bit more elegant with it. I'm big on fonts, <laughs> so I appreciate all the cleanness there. What really stood out in this one was the score. I thought they brought it this time around. Beautiful orchestral pieces accompany this movie through and through. I, I really don't have a negative. I don't have a single negative. If you like Inside Out, if it's a favorite of yours, I can't see you being bummed out by this one. I can't see you being let down. It really retains everything that made the first movie special and brings its own stuff to the table. It has some modern stuff catered to this generation of teenagers without alienating older folks like myself who came out of the retirement center to watch this with his kids. It just works on every single level. Massively impressed. This is one of my favorites of the year. Hands down, easy, no competition. Short for competition. I want to hear from you though. Have you seen this yet? Are you excited now? Were you a little trepidatious, kind of like I was? I... I get it. There's been a lot of sequels. There's been a lot of remakes, a lot of rehashes. Nothing feels fresh or original. But at least in this instance, you can see the passion put on the screen. You can see they really tried to do the first one justice by keeping this story fresh, by keeping these characters great. And I think they accomplished it hands down. Okay, please think about liking the video and subscribing. I would appreciate it. More subscribers is always welcome. You might not always agree with me. I might not always be right in terms of what the masses perceive as a hit or a win or a loss or whatever, but I am always 100% honest. I don't have anything to lose. <laughs> so <laughs> there's no reason for me to sell out in that sense. And I'm having a good time talking about movies. So if it's showing through, hit the subscribe, please. Think about becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Tons of perks there depending on what tier level you support at. And I even have a second channel that's pretty new called Adam Does Rants. Think about joining there as well. And hopefully I see you next time. Take care.